What's going on, people? How you guys doing, man? It's the Red Dog Street back with the wrestling video. It's been almost like four months, four or three months. But, glad to be back making a YouTube video, so here goes nothing. Um, one thing I do want to talk about is uh, this response to the wrestling gurus. Um, basically, Mitch Smith, the front man who um, did this video about WWE believing the fans, but he wasn't the only one. It's been going on everywhere. There's an article that I want to find about. WWE blaming the fans on their low buy rates. One thing I could say, I feel like this is kind of a big problem because people are changing channel and going to consensus stands during these matches, which is the Divas matches. I feel like one problem I do have is that they need to stop throwing in Diva matches on TV. It's like the matches are so quick to watch, especially Survivor Series. Survivor Series, that match was straight up rushed. I felt like the match was, it was terrible. Like, everybody's saying it was terrible. I don't even feel like it. I knew it was. And it's still my opinion, but I still, like, could not believe what happened. I felt like I was still in shock and kind of shaking my head with how rushed the matches were. And I was like, what the heck is going on? And I could agree, the match was too quick. I felt like it's like they're doing whatever it takes to have Divas matches ended so quickly. And that's just my uh, strong opinion about that. Because if you look at it, they didn't use finishing moves. Rosa Mendes don't even have a finishing move. I don't know if Eva Marie has a finishing move. And JoJo, I felt like the only good part of her was JoJo because she looked like an underdog and she actually did have some p parts of the match where she actually did some utilizing moves especially against Tamita and Natalia and AJ did look great in the ring but that's quite the only thing but she hasn't got it AJ didn't really get in as much but I felt like you know total divas need to, need to win on Monday night they should have the other divas win the WWE divas win against the total divas they should have won and beat them that way they could have built the story you know i hear so much about how this storyline sacrificed for total divas honestly i feel like total divas does not need to be promoted they do not need to be promoted people are watching and they're talking about how total divas bringing a lot of light to the divas division it, it is like aj bad mouth the total divas and against the divas the total divas i knew they're going to be pissed off about that and aj is going to bad mouth and say you are not worthy wwe wrestlers or competitors they had a story going, but with Total Divas just winning, it's like it's making AJ look straight up irrelevant. Her title reigns are relevant. Her build up with Tamita's association is irrelevant. And honestly, it's like the commentators I feel like are the ones putting in the effort. They're doing their part to put effort and put more story to it, but they need a story, more build up. Like the commentators are doing as much as they can, but the creative team, I felt like they need to build up the story more and have more heat into it. That's what I felt like. And they have somewhere going, but they're just not running with it. It's like they get given something, they have to run the ball with it. You can't do the other way around. It's like the running back can't hand the ball to the quarterback. The quarterback has to hand the ball to the running back and run with it. That's the... <coughs> that's what's truthfully be told here. So, I don't know if I can say that, but that sounds great. I mean, look at two... Yeah. Yeah, I was going to say look at 2003 where how all the Divas were used because all of them were relevant on TV even though some Divas couldn't wrestle but they were well utilized on TV. Not all of them did wrestle. They had some ballet managers and Diddy and Jamie Nova felt like that had some great story as well. So I don't know if I could go off on too much but basically that's what you just have to say to that. Lita Tristratus were also used as ballets and wrestlers and they were built up from there. So basically that's what I have to say to that. Uh, most one thing I want to talk about is another thing is Ryback. Uh, honestly, Ryback is really getting annoying to me. He's talking about he's bullying people backstage. He doesn't like bullies. And after getting dumped by Paul Heyman, he went from being a big, beautiful man to Paul Heyman calling him an ugly dummy. And then Ryback called the fans PB morons. I felt like it's a little too late for this whole, oh, I love being a bully stuff. Because I felt like his feud with CM Punk was kind of a stop sign for him. It's like he... It's like he ran into a stop sign and then he's like, he waits too long at the stop sign and then he starts going. That's what I felt like it is at that. It's like, he should have continued that storyline from there and say he loves being a bully and stuff like that. Because I felt like 
they it kind of like detoured detoured with the character they're trying to build him up, and it's becoming totally irrelevant at this point right now. And honestly, him getting squashed by Mark Henry, I thought it was awesome to watch. And they need to re get him a new character, or if they want to keep the character, have a new feud with Mark Henry. It's very subpar, but Sheamus I felt like would be super awesome. So that's that's what I gotta say to that and. Which meaning that, yeah, he needs a few machines. Like, honestly, I felt like that would be entertaining, but I felt like that's, I felt like could build up so much into his character, but they got to, uh, rebuild the character, repackage it. That's what I got to say to that, honestly. <coughs> Another thing I want to say to that, which is, so yeah, basically that's what I have to say to that. So, another... Uh, situation is, or turn Ryback as a face, that's what I felt like they could go from there, but I felt like they could build up so much he could build up so much as a face because when he debuted, he was so relevant and on his rise, but then you can't have the heel turn slow down if you, get, you gotta keep that momentum, they didn't really run with the momentum, so I felt like that was the real problem, even as a face when he kept getting squashed by the shield, and that's what I gotta say that, one thing I could say was the rise, is that the shield CM Punk, the Wyatt family, and the well you alive. I felt like <coughs> those were the the Shield, Real Americans, Rhodes, Usos, and Rey Mysterio had the best match at Survivor Series alongside CM Punk, Bride, and the Wyatt family. And it's kind of disappointing because those were their only two good matches from there. They're two of the best matches because Curtis Axel Biggie is kind of neutral for me. I felt like it was okay. Biggie was more utilized and he did show a lot of agility, which I didn't expect to see, but I knew he had the quickness and strength enough, so I felt like, you know, there's some stuff I didn't expect, but I knew what he could hold, bring to the table, and I felt like he was the big star to the match against Curtis Axel. But, one thing I could say that Big E has been well utilized, and there is some great stuff that, you know, there's some stuff there you're doing well in, but I felt like also what's hurting them is the Divas division. Right back, and the main event is kind of what's hurt holding the back. That's kind of like the main thing, though, because Big Show, I felt like the match hit with him and Randy Orton wasn't super great, but I could say <coughs> she wasn't good at all because the match I felt like was kind of slow. But Randy Orton, I felt like he did as much as he can. He did try to bring a lot to the table, but Big Show, you know, kind of botched the DDT, and it, it, he didn't look too credible, but. If Big Show did work with Orton look a lot more, and Orton did put the effort to work with a giant like Big Show, he would he would be fantastic. The match could be fantastic, but it was just a little too mediocre. In the fact that the corporation and Triple H and Stephanie said no physical interference, and they did the physical interference itself, I felt like that story was a little bit too experimental, so I wouldn't bash on it too much. But I felt a little bit it was kind of dumb, but. Still kind of unnecessary though, to say the least. Um, I'm in Boston. I did. I wasn't too disappointed. I didn't come, but after all the reviews I heard from it, I wasn't too disappointed from it um, that I didn't come. But SummerSlam was excellent. I'm glad I went to SummerSlam live. I felt like that's gonna be one of the best moments I went to live to a wrestling show. I'm never gonna forget. Which I could say. Um, yeah. So I felt like. What I can say, John Cena and Randy Orton at TLC. <laughs> I don't know. That's going to be, I feel like that could bring up some buy rates. So I feel like, you know, what what I think they're trying to go with, Vince McMahon and the rest of the staff, it's like, give the fans some patience. So hopefully if the fans can be patient at some extent, and Daniel Bryan do get reached to that main event of winning the Royal Rumble, go to WrestleMania, that would be such a great story. But I feel like I'm going to lose sight of predicting what the Royal Rumble may be like. But... I want to say I want to bank on Danny Bryan winning the Royal Rumble, which I'm hoping for that will happen. And if someone else wins the Royal Rumble, they got to put effort to build this guy because Alberto Del Rio could not win it again. He already won the 40-man Royal Rumble, and they did so much build-up from him since then. And I don't interest me as much. And another thing I could say is that... <coughs> what is it? One of the th sorry, one other thing I could say is that, yeah, so yeah, 
have Daniel Bryan build up from there at WrestleMania because he did have that 18 second match. Have him get that redemption that he had from two years ago. Yeah, because it's going to be 2014, so two years ago when he lost in 18 seconds. And after he had a slight downfall, build him up from there and get him in that groove again to have that WrestleMania win. And then he has history to be made. I feel like that would be great. And for the Shield, I feel like the Shield, um, I feel like the Shield, they can use as much juice as they can before they break up. Because unlike Nexus, they have been continued to be utilized in such great value. Reason being is because you have an all-around team with three guys. I felt like the Nexus were <coughs> everywhere on TV, but they kept getting new wrestlers. McGillicuddy, Husky Harris, where Husky Harris is now with the Wyatt family, which I still thought was interesting. Which is interesting now that he's been rebuilding. And um, Michael McGillicuddy is now Curtis Axel, so you get some irony story from there. But Nexus have became irrelevant from there. Almost all the wrestlers, including Wade Barrett, have become super relevant, including Ryback, which kind of sucks. And The Shield, hopefully if they were to break up, I feel like they need to break up on different terms, not just bury them and then they start to split up. I feel like um, if they were to split up, have a jealousy feud between Dean Ambrose and Roman Reigns. Seth Rollins kind of like get in the middle, then they do a triple threat match. I felt like that would be great for the WWE main roster, but if you were to split them up, make them super relevant after the split up, or find out as much as they can, because I feel like when John Cena and Randy Orton's towards their retirement, <coughs> or John Cena, I feel like John Cena may end up like The Rock and start to take a wrestling hiatus and be part-time, but I don't know if that's going to happen. I can't, time will tell, but you have young talent to build up. As they step down. So you have something to build up. And Roman Reigns has been looking like a beast. And he was in one of the best matches. That's amazing. And Rhodes and Goldust are on the same rise as well. And the Usos. The Shield has shook up a lot of. A lot of. Uh, situations in WWE. So kudos to WWE for that. But I just felt like. Some of the stuff I did talk about earlier. I felt like if they utilized that a little bit more. The ratings would be a little bit up. I mean. Yeah, there's, there's some. They're having their low buy rates, but you can't have it for three paper. Actually, three or four pay per views in a row. Oh, yeah. Battle Champions mediocre. Survivor Series were mediocre, but Battleground Hell and Cell weren't too great. <coughs> and Danny Bryan, I think if you get a little patience from there, he'll he'll be in the scene. So I'm hoping that does happen. And John Cena, Randy Orton, I feel like they'll have a great match at TLC. But it's great that you have three way predictions, but we don't know what's going to happen. But. I don't want to get it too obvious, but because I, I feel like it may come true, and it would sound like too much of a prediction, so that's what I'm hoping to that. Um, yeah, so that's just my big show reviews. I haven't done wrestling in a while, so it's just been so long, so sorry if my video is too long, but hopefully you enjoyed it, and anything I did miss, you know, I'll make sure I do another video on that. So, that's just my video, and hopefully you have a nice day, and I'll catch you guys on the flip side. Peace out.